Well, it's time for this year's Maker's Challenge. That's where Theo Kellison challenges a bunch of YouTube rock hounds to make something out of the rocks they found. It's not a competition or anything, it's just where we all make something and show what we did on our various YouTube channels. So I'm here in my daughter's room. Uh, my daughter is grown up and moved out of the house now. And my wife redecorated the room with a daisy theme after she left. So there's daisies everywhere. One of the things my daughter liked doing was raising butterflies. So this is a butterfly she raised from an egg in the basement and then released it. She released like, I don't know, 50 to 100 probably for several years in a row. So my project takes place over here. Uh, you might remember this from a previous video. When we got this wall hanging in the middle of every flower was this really ugly plastic diamond. So I took those off and I made these little cabs, cabochons, uh, with magnets on the back so I could just put them in there. And I think it looks a lot better like this. But I think it needs a butterfly. So on one of those things I'm going to make a little stone butterfly, hopefully. That's the plan at least. So uh, now it's uh, time to go to the basement and get started I guess. First thing I have to do is decide on a rock to cut for the wings. So this is not the rock I'm going to be using, but I just wanted to show you how thin I can cut them. So this is a piece of Brazilian agate, and I've got it cut out to make guitar picks out of. You can see I've got them marked out there and just haven't cut them yet. But that's, that's how thin I can cut. I can probably cut thinner, but if I go any thinner than that, they're just going to break and I'm going to have all kinds of problems. So... So I want to stick with Michigan rocks, that's why I'm not using that kind of rock. But this is the first rock I'm going to cut. Uh, this is already slabbed, much too thick. Uh, but that actual rock is in my saw right now, and I've only got enough to make a couple more thin slices. So uh, I'm not going to take it out of the saw because then I can't line it up again. So that'll be my first one. Uh, this is called a Meta Arcos, and this is a basically a quartzite. But instead of being metamorphosed from sandstone, it's metamorphosed uh, sandstone with a bunch of feldspar in it. That's what gives it the orange color. So uh, that's a good color. Uh, one, of, one of the things I was thinking about, though, is it'd be fun to have a pattern where you get kind of a mirror image like this. So this one's unfortunately already slabbed, but uh, that would have been an awesome one because those are really nice pudding stones. So uh, I am going to do a pudding stone. Hopefully I can find one as nice as this one. Another option that's a little more plain and doesn't have a lot of pattern, although there's some here. Uh, this is a pink rock. I don't remember exactly where I found this. Probably in Lake Superior. But uh, it's got a little bit of stripe to it. Not, not as you know definite of a pattern as the pudding stone do it does. A little bit yellow down here. And I think that's big enough I can get a couple good slabs out of it. Well, definitely can get a lot of slabs. The, the trick is getting them big enough to make butterfly wings. So uh, that should be no problem. And then the last one that I'm thinking about doing, or will be doing, is Kona Dolomite. I've already cut on this a little bit. This is a, a soft rock from Marquette. Uh, they use this in their ditches up there for, like, fill riprap, I guess they call it. Uh, but anyhow, really, really nice rock. I uh, like it a lot. It's also very soft. Uh, it's it's like a like a Petoskey stone. It's probably like a three or four on the Mohs scale. So uh, great pattern on it. Good color. So that's another option. So I'm going to do all four of these rocks and make four sets of butterfly wings. And hopefully at least one of them works out for me. And if I end up with four butterflies, well, there's worse things that could happen. While the saws in the garage are cutting slabs for the wings, I'm going to work on the bodies in here. So uh, my plan is just to cut some thin strips and then try to shape them into body shapes from there. So uh, I guess the first thing is to cut these out. I was going to use black, uh, but I didn't have any black rocks, so I went with a, just a dark color and I had a lot of green. So green it is. This is my Dremel drill press, and I'm going to cut some holes for legs. Uh, this is marked for three different butterfly bodies, so if you would just look at one of them down here. I'm going to make leg holes in those two spots and those two spots. And then on the opposite side, those are going to be where the antennas are going to go in. So uh, I did a little Google search uh, last night. Uh, I Google searched butterfly legs, which is a weird thing to search for. But I found that they have 
they have six legs because they're an insect, but the front two legs on a lot of species are underdeveloped and sort of tucked in close to their body, so you really only see four legs. So if you can only see four legs, I'm only making four legs. So I'm just going to drill holes there, and then I, I left it long because I figured it'd be easier to hold on to here, uh, and then I'll, I'll cut it into sections and I'll take it over to the cab machine and shape them into little cylinders. Slabs are cut and I have my wing shapes traced out. Really like how the pudding stone turned out. And I did different shapes for each one of them. Uh, I figured there's a lot of different kinds of butterflies. They don't all have the same shape wings, so I did a variety. And then I found this rock uh, kind of laying in my saw. It was down in the oil. Uh, I wasn't going to do any dark ones, but this one's just too cool not to use. And it was already cut really thin. It has uh, some saw. You can't see them here. Well, maybe you can. Uh, this is thicker here and a little thinner and a little thinner. I was just trying to straighten that out. And I never never pulled the slab out of the oil when I was done. So I'm going to try that one, see how that works. So now I'm going to cut them. I'm concerned about how some of these are going to cut. Uh, this stuff's a little bit crumbly sometimes. And it, it might just chip at the edges. Uh, since this one's so soft, I might have a little bit of problem with that one. Uh, these two seem okay. This one's thinner than the rest, so that might be a problem there. So we'll see what happens. The reason I'm doing a whole bunch is because I'm hoping one turns out. <laughs> if, I, if I get one good butterfly out of this, we'll, we'll be in good shape. These Kona Dolomite wings are too soft to do in the tumbler, which is what I'm thinking about doing with some of the other ones. Uh, so I'm going to do them on the cab machine here. I'm thinking I'll probably be able to get away with just doing the last three wheels. If I need to, I'll go back to the, the third wheel here. Uh, but hopefully I can polish them up with the other ones. I just dried this off and it's showing some scratches. I think you can see them there. They're on both sides. I did this very quickly. I think I could get the scratch. I know I could get the scratch off if I spend enough time on this, this wheel right here. Uh, but if I back up one wheel, I think that's going to be better. Plus, I haven't done any of the edges yet. I kind of forgot about that. I want to make this uh, tapered on the edges so it doesn't look so thick. So here's the one that I haven't polished. You can see it doesn't have a shine yet. Uh, I also need to cut these in later. I didn't cut those in yet because I figured it'd be a little stronger while I'm working on the on these big flat surfaces. I didn't want it to crack right along there. So on all the wings, I left that little bit in there and I'll cut it out later. So I'm going to go back, try this again, and I'll just show you what it looks like when I get finished. I could not be any happier with how these turned out. Uh, they're nice and shiny. Uh, they look really good. I polished up one of the little butterfly bodies so I can play around with that. I need to get these glued on there. That's going to be the next challenge. Uh, these are going to go in the tumbler. Uh, these are fairly thick and I think they'll hold up. I end up cutting out the little notches there. I was going to do them without cutting those out and then I thought, what the heck, if I'm going to tumble these, I'm just going to tumble them and see what happens. These I do not have high hopes for. They're very thin, but if I'm going to learn how to do these, and, and if, I, if these work in the tumbler, that's going to save me a ton of time. So I'd rather just throw them in. If they break, I'll know they're too thin. I won't do it again. If they don't break, and I want to make more of these, 
that's going to be really nice to know. So those are going in the tumbler. I know that pudding stone does not tumble great. The white matrix always has little pits in it, so it does much better on the cab machine. So those are going to get cabbed, and these are all going in the tumbler also. So I'm going to throw them in the lotto tumbler, these, these wings and then these, uh, just with ceramics. Just, just the four wings and the bodies and ceramics and nothing else, uh, just to give them the best chance of survival. Believe it or not, uh, all the wings survived, even these really thin ones. Uh, they look really good. I would, in the future, taper the edges of these. Uh, I didn't taper them because I just wanted to see how they look like, look without tapering them, and I've decided they'd they look better tapered, so next time they get tapered. Uh, I do have these bodies where the holes for the legs and the antenna are all caked with grit, or not grit, but slurry and polish, I guess. So I have a new toy to play with. Uh, one of my subscribers, somebody anonymous, sent me this. It's like a water pick, but it's all self-contained in this one little unit. So you just push the button here. And I've already tried it out, and it works really well. I've been doing it through each stage. So you just you can hit the holes. It cleans them out pretty much immediately. So I have to thank the Advocate for the Protection of Sewing Needles. Thank you. Nice gift. I think I'll, I'll definitely enjoy this. Well, now I need to figure out how to glue the wings onto the body and have them at an angle like this while the glue dries. So, I made a little jig out of a piece of 2x4. I drilled a hole in the end, and then I cut these tapers on my table saw. And then I was worried that everything was going to stick. So if I put this in here and this on there, I didn't want everything to stick to the wood. So I got on the internet and I looked to see what I could do to wood to make epoxy not stick to it. And I read that you can use car wax. So I waxed this and I tried a little test on the back. I made a couple of these. I did a test in the back and I put a blob of epoxy on there and it did kind of stick. I got it off but it was a little bit sticky and I'm afraid with those fragile wings that trying to pry it off there wouldn't go so well. So uh, my wax idea didn't work. They did say to use a certain kind of wax, and I didn't have that kind of wax, so I just used turtle wax that I had in the garage. So what I'm going to try to do instead is uh, put put wax paper in there and do it like that. It's going to stick up a little bit, but I think by the time I get the weight of the wings on there, I can make it all work. So I think it will stay. So that's what I'm going to try anyhow, see how it goes. The other thing that I'm going to have a problem with is I need to cut, I need to rough up the edges of this. This is all shiny from the tumbler, so I need to rough it up so the glue sticks better. On these, I just didn't polish that part. Uh, the ones that were in the tumbler, I can rough that up on the cab machine really quickly. Uh, but for this, I need to make a straight line down the side. So what I've done is i got a couple pieces of silver wire here. These aren't permanent yet, but just to know where the top of this is. Keep it kind of centered that way. Now I put the wires in for the antennas and now I'm just going to try to go along the edge there and do this. I already did one and kind of messed it up a little bit. It, it spun on me so I got to hold it down really tightly. So let's try this again. This is a diamond burr on here, a really small one. I'm going to hold that down really tight so it doesn't do that again. There's one. Oops, turned a little bit. Oh no, I guess I didn't. Hey, that should do it. That went better than the first time. A little bit of a scratch there. I might go over it one more time because uh, those don't look very wide, but uh, I think that's going to work fine. Okay, it took me two tries to get that. Uh, the first time uh, the paper was sticking up, and as I slid the wing in, it smeared along the paper, and then I got glue on the paper, uh, so that was going to be on the back of the wing and not look good. So. Always make sure that you have some acetone around 
Uh, that works really well for cleaning this stuff up while it's still wet. Uh, and the epoxy I'm using is this stuff. Uh, this is supposed to be good for making jewelry and stuff. Uh, I've had really good luck with it. It's kind of expensive. Uh, you can get smaller tubes, which I think next time I will get smaller tubes because these always get all gunky. Um, and I, I end up throwing away a quarter of the thing. So anyhow, that's the kind I use. Uh, I'm going to let that dry. Hopefully it gets a good solid bond and uh, I'll show you the rest of them when they're done. So now it needs legs and antennas, and I think I'm going to do the legs first and the antennas later. So I have some scraps of silver wire from making jewelry here. I think what I'll do is just take some of these little scraps and cut them to length. I'm not really sure what length, so cut them a little long and shorten them up if I need, need to. Actually, that's probably good right there for starters. Put a little bend in it. Maybe something like that. And then we'll just, some of the little holes I drilled earlier. And those will get uh, epoxied in. And I'll, I'll cut this shorter when I get them all on there and kind of decide how I want it to look, but uh, something like that. So the antennas I'll put on later. I think I'm just going to do legs for right now, let those dry, and then I'll deal with the antennas after that. Got the four legs inserted into the holes. They're not glued in yet. Uh, I need to kind of plan ahead a little bit here. So this needs to be mounted onto a flower. So here's my flower center that I'm going to use. And I think I only need to have one leg inserted into this uh, to be secure. I don't think I need to complicate matters by drilling all four of them in or even a couple of them in. So I'm going to try to do it with just one. Uh, these need to be cut a little bit shorter yet. But... Uh, I want the, the leg drilled in at a little bit of an angle. I don't think the angle is super important because I can bend the legs around the way I want them. But to get it on an angle, I've used this slab. Uh, this is my, the other one of these, the wings broke. So uh, I'm just going to use this because it's thin. I think that will give me about the right angle if I set that on here like this. And then I just drill a little hole in it. So that's what I'm going to try to do right now. Okay, legs are done. Uh, these two I did like I told you I was going to do. And then the other ones, uh, when I showed Nancy what I was doing, she was picturing them sitting on the petals rather than in the middle of the flower. So I made two of them with little hooks that I hope will, will hook onto the petals. I did kind of a test run, uh, but the legs weren't glued in. They kept falling off, so uh, I hope they fit. I can bend them around. I think it'll be fine. So two Nancy's way, two my way. I don't know how many of these I'm going to put on the flowers at the same time. I uh, might just put on, uh, you know, one or two uh, at a time, um, maybe all four. We'll see what happens. So the next thing I need to do is put antennae on them. I think I said antennas before, but I actually looked it up. And antennas is appropriate if you're talking about like a TV or radio antenna. But for insects, it's antennae with an AE at the end. So anyhow, I just bent these little, this is half round wire, uh, more scrap wire that I had. And I'm just going to glue those in the little holes that I made before. So I will do that and then they'll be done and I'll show you how they look on the flower. There they are all perched on their little flowers. Happy as could be. This was my idea for mounting them. And this one needs a bigger magnet. Uh, the extra weight there is just a little bit too much for these magnets. So they keep sliding off to the side. And then... This is Nancy's idea, is to mount them on the pedal. So I, I kind of like that better because she's right, it doesn't block the middle of the flower that way. There's a bunch of other videos to be watched on the Makers Challenge. I'll have links to all of them in the description. Uh, check them out because there's a wide variety of things that people did. Um, it's amazing the different ideas that people come up with. So uh, go check those out and uh, we'll see you later.